Hey, what's going on guys? It's Delvidge and today I want to bring you how to create a free YouTube banner with Photoshop CS6 in 2016. I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to create you know, graphics and GFX or just graphic design in general. But specifically in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a YouTube banner. So if we go over to my portfolio, I have a lot of different uh, designs up here. And we're gonna go specifically to social media. Now, these are Twitter headers, yes, I understand, but every single one of these Twitter headers with the exception of this JPEX one right here, was created into a YouTube banner. And the way for creating it is exactly the same. The only difference is the dimensions. Let's go back into Photoshop and the very first thing you need to do is check the link in the description because I will have a download for you on how to get these black bars. And uh, these black bars are extremely useful mainly because they help you design in the area that YouTube will show the banner in. Because if you design something, say, all the way up here in these black bars, like, hey, this will not show up. This will not be a part of your banner. But if you decide to put it in the middle right here, which isn't a very good idea because there's no backing yet, but we'll get to that in a second, uh, YouTube will have that shown up. Now, the guides that I have set up are basically uh, these little bars right here. And uh, what they do is they help me choose and pick where the most important information in the banner goes. So mainly on, this is for tablets and mobile, right? So tablets and mobile aren't gonna be showcasing this stuff all the way in these corners. That's why I have these little guides right here to help me to put all of the important information in the center and that's what you want to be doing too. Okay, enough rambling. I'm gonna be right back and I'm going to get a background in here. In order to do that, all you have to do is do a simple Google search for a background that you want. It could be whatever game, whatever you want, but I'm just gonna get one real quick, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we have an Overwatch map background right now, and it make sure it's HD as well. I forgot to mention, it has to be HD, or else you're gonna be getting an image the size of this. And that's not going to be really good because remember you have to make it the entire size of the image so I'm still going to be doing a little bit of stretching and uh, all you have to do is choose the sides and move them towards the edge of the banner just like this and just to make it a little bit more realistic I'll probably make it a little bit higher as well just like that so yeah it doesn't have to be anything crazy just a simple background and you'll be good to go all right now to delete the very top part because we don't need the top part over here all you have to do is use the marque tool and just select it and the guide should help you pinpoint the selection so you don't go over into the actual banner and then you just press delete on your keyboard and it's gone or alternatively what you can do is you can just move uh, I believe these black bars and move them on top of absolutely everything so it doesn't matter. So now that we have the background in, I'm gonna be adding a few minor effects to help the banner look better in general. So let's go over here, we'll put this away for one second, create a new layer, and go to our brush tool. Now in our brush tool, everybody should have a simple brush uh, that's a circle. If I can just get to them real quick if it would load. All right, so just a simple brush like that that's a circle. Make sure your hardness is all the way at 0%. This is extremely crucial. Uh, just make sure the hardness is at 0%. Put up the size a little bit, maybe to about 300, something like that. And then on the very edges of your banner, what you need to do is just follow my guide like right here. Actually change the color to black, I forgot. Um, and drag down. And it's going to create this nice little shadow effect on the side and you can do this for the bottom if you really want and you can also do this actually let me do a better job here and you can also do this for the side and then once you have that shadow done what you can do is you can go to the layer styles by double clicking on the layer and change the opacity down to probably about 40% so now we have a little bit of a shadow which looks pretty cool. You can see if we toggle it on and off, it makes a huge difference in my opinion. So now that we have that, we're gonna be adding a light at the very top. All right, so it's basically the same thing that we did for the shadow. The only difference is that we switched the color from black to white and we switched the location. So let's make this circle a little bit bigger so the light is a little bit bigger. All we have to do is use our bracket keys and uh, on the right bracket key, just one and two, maybe three and four, and we have a bigger light. 
All right, now all we have to do is go to the very center and just touch it uh, one time on your mouse or your touchpad or whatever you're using and it'll create a little light. Now, if we want to have this light be a little bit more visible, all we have to do is drag it down a little bit from the center and the light's more visible. If you want to make it more centered, all you have to do is choose the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, select the entire document, go to your move tool and select the two middle ones like that and that will center the light on the entire page. Now personally, I don't like to do this too much. I prefer to have it at the very top, but you can do whatever you want, whatever design you want, it's very simple. Okay, now that we have that done, I'm gonna be creating some simple text. Now, this text can range from anything from your channel name to you can just have a logo in the center or you can just have some social media, whatever it may be, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna be doing something really simple and easy to follow because it's a tutorial. So, let's just say, Delvage. Just type Delvage. I can't even spell my own channel name right now. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Delvage. There we go. And uh, control T to transform. Drag up holding shift and alt so it's centered. And now we have our text. Now let's center it again using the same type of controls that I did before. The two middle buttons. And now that should be centered completely in the middle of the banner. Now we have the text in, I want to add my logo in. And to do this, all you have to do is just add a file. Um, and I will get to that in a second. Just going to my Delvish 2.0 and add my file, my logo, which is pretty cool. And just drag this in, really simple. And we will align it with my name and all we have to do is just align it perfectly with the name by dragging it and again holding shift and alt to make it centered okay so we have that let's drag it to the side so it's not covering the text completely and now we have our logo now to make the text a little bit better I'm going to be adding an italicized effect and if you don't know what that is it's basically where it makes the text look like it's on its side and to do that, all you have to do is select the text layer and highlight it with the text tool. Go to this little button right here called the character. Go down to this little italicized logo and click it. And now it's italicized for you. Okay, so now we have the text pretty much said and done. I want to add a pretty cool effect that I think you guys will like. All I have to do is add another layer underneath the text. Go to this bar, this uh, rectangular uh, tool. And if you have it on something else like the polygon tool, all you have to do is right click on it and go to the rectangle tool and you should be fine. Drag out a nice little bar that covers the text. Let's rasterize that by clicking, by right clicking on it and go into rasterize layer. Control T, move it to fit the entire text. And it's okay if it doesn't match with the logo, we're gonna fix that later. And then all we have to do is click on the text uh, control click on the text to select it go back to the move tool select the rectangle that we just created go back to these two options and it will center the text with the bar now this is a pretty cool trick that I like to use on a lot of my designs I press control and I click on the text layer and then I go down to the rectangle layer and I press delete and what it does is it creates this nice little effect on the bar. It deletes the text from the bar, giving it this cool effect. All right, so now we have it centered completely with the logo. Now, another really cool trick that I like to do a lot is you can select the logo layer again by pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail. Just really simple. And you have it selected. Then you go up to the select menu on the very top of your Photoshop, go to modify and expand and then just for sake I'll go by 10 pixels and that should create a nice little border around your logo now what you can do from here is you can go back to the rectangle layer make sure it's selected and press delete and this creates a cool little space between your logo and your little bar with your text on it and I think that's a really cool uh, concept now to make it a little bit cooler I'm gonna be adding a little bit of an edge to this rectangle as well so I'm gonna go to the very top with the polygonal lasso tool Go to the very corner and drag down like so just by clicking and then I can delete it 
and it'll create a nice little edge like that, right? Now, if I wanted to do it more in towards the text, all I'd have to do is do it closer. Again, just click, do the little line thing that I just did, select all around, and then press delete. And you have a nice little edge to your text right there. All right, so that's all fine and dandy, but what if you want some social links in there, like your Twitter, like your Twitch, like your Patreon, whatever you want, we can add it into this banner. So now that we have this main uh, text out of the way, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving it to the side so that we can have room for a social link or two. So let's make it a little bit smaller, move it to the left, all right. And then let's go to Google. And this is where I got my background, by the way, I just searched Overwatch map background HD. Let's go to Twitter logo. And let's copy this into Photoshop. Okay guys, we are back here in Photoshop and what I actually did is I copied the Twitter and the Twitch logo into Photoshop for you guys just to save time so this video isn't like 30 minutes long and I also ended up making the text for both my Twitter and my Twitch links and again it's extremely easy to do. All you have to do is go over to the text tool and just type in what you want so if your Twitter was at Apple one two three that's what you would put and just size it appropriately really easy I'm not going to go over that because it's again super simple to do another thing that I did is I actually ended up doing a subtitle and if you don't know what a subtitle is it's basically like a little underheading that has some text like this that says welcome to my channel overwatch tutorials and gameplay videos this is just something that I would do for my channel and you can customize it to whatever you'd like for your channel specifically and again it's extremely easy to you to uh, do all you have to do is go to your text go and click and just type whatever you want it to say and just say welcome to my channel and again just click OK and you can type whatever else you'd want and again just size it appropriately for the logo or text or whatever you have now this final thing that I added is I actually went in and I got some color correction from a pack that I have and I will leave a link to the pack that I got the color correction from in the description it's actually a phase clan color correction and if you can see when I turned it on it just makes everything look a little bit better in my opinion it makes the text stand out and we will be also adding some drop shadow to the text and the social links in a little bit to make it stand out even more but the color correction I think it looks a little bit better than just without color correction and again all you have to do to get this is go into the description and click the link and you can buy it it is uh, pretty cheap in my opinion and definitely for the quality that you'll be getting with the color corrections if you plan on designing a lot so we basically have all of the fundamentals done now so what we can do is we can add everything to a group by selecting all of them with the shift key all of these layers that you want to add to the group really simple and just put them into a group drag them into this little folder icon at the bottom and they will all be in a group if Photoshop would work can you work yes you can okay now they're all in a group sorry about that guys it just kind of lagged a little bit right there all right, so we'll actually save this real quick. You always wanna make sure you save the project you're working on just in case Photoshop crashes for whatever reason. Uh, but let's rename this group to text layer or whatever you want. Uh, I'll just name it text layer and give it a nice little color by right clicking on this little eye icon, I guess you could say, and go to red. It's not really needed, but it makes it look a little bit cooler and makes it stand out. So now we have all of these layers in a group. And actually one more thing that I'm going to be doing before we add drop shadow is changing the layer styles on these two social links to make them match. So we can go and choose our Twitter logo. I'm going to add a gradient overlay. I'm going to go to this one right here and maybe make the uh, yellow a little bit darker just to uh, stay with the style a little bit. And another trick that I'd like to show you is go to your inner glow, change the color to white, go to overlay in the blend mode and change the size to one and it creates a nice little bevel or not bevel I should say um, I don't know, know what I was saying with that it creates a nice little outline uh, in lighter if we zoom in we can see it's a little lighter on the edges and we will copy this layer by right clicking and going to copy layer style and then right clicking on the twitch and click paste and it'll create the same layer style for both of them and now they both match which is pretty cool 
All right, so now that we have that done, we're gonna be adding some drop shadow. And this is really what stands out when you're creating you know, tech stuff on top of background. So just right click, go to the layer styles again, go to drop shadow, and I'm gonna be changing the distance um, to about 16 or 15, and then making the size about, uh, go to 20. If I can get it, I'll just type in that actually. There we go. And if you want even more of effect, all you have to do is copy. Or what you can do also, if you don't want to do that, is you can just, uh, I'll show you, actually copy it just in case. Rasterize it by right clicking and uh, going to merge group. And it'll rasterize it all together. And then you can go and apply the same effect over again. There we go. Changing the size. And again, if you really want to add a nice little drop shadow effect, again, if you want, um, I'll just do it a little bit more. There we go. And there's the drop shadow applied to the text and the social links. And it makes everything stand out. You can see if we turn it off, um, what it looks like with and without it. I think it looks a bit better with it, in my opinion. It makes things stand out, like I said. And yeah, that's basically all you need to know for creating banners. If you want to create or add something like, uh, I don't even know, Soldier 76. Um, I'll show you this real quick, the last thing that I'll do. Um, say this, what you can do is copy it, go into Photoshop, Control V to paste it in as a new layer. Um, actually put this on top because I'll be working with it. You can go to the pen tool, and if you want to, you can outline it by clicking it. It takes a long time, but if you really want like a person or a cartoon in your uh, banner, you can just use the pen tool and outline it just like this, and it will create a nice little outline. And it takes a long time, like I said, I won't be doing it, but eventually you will get the layer that you want. And uh, let's just do something really simple, just so I can show you what you do when you connect it all. I just make a, this obviously would be around the entire Soldier 76, but then you click right click, make selection, OK, and then press Control J, and it will create a duplicate layer of what you just pen tooled, and that's what the Soldier 76 would be, and you can just put that in the background as you want. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically it guys. One last thing is how to save it. Go to File. Save for web, always go for save for web because you are adding it to a web page and it'll look better on a web page because there is no metadata. Uh, you wanna have make sure this is selected to none. Um, I believe it's on like copyright and contact info as, as general or all. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, I haven't had it on in a long time, but yeah. Um, sometimes YouTube won't accept PNGs for some reason as channel art, so what I like to do is just go to JPEG and go do maximum and then just save it onto your desktop and say banner for YouTube or something like that. Click save and there you have it, there's your banner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to smash that like button and I might upload some more in the future. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section below like thumbnails, Twitch overlays, I can do all of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed again. Good luck designing your own channel art and until next time guys, farewell.